Hi, this is Muki Mueng. You are watching On the Couch Conversations with Muki. Today, I have a conversation with Dr. Pumeza Kotanyati, who is a registered counseling psychologist. Good afternoon, uh, doctor. Oh, How are you? Doctor. <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Yes, uh, Pumeza, if you're comfortable certainly, with me calling you. Certainly. Uh, certainly. I was going to charge you for yeah. calling yourself Muki and calling me doctor. Yes, ne? Yeah. <laughs> So Pumeza, um, when someone asks who is Pumeza, what would you say? So Pumeza is a woman. Uh, uh, oh, I don't know if I'm middle-aged or I'm retirement <laughs> age. But uh, a mother, a woman born in Port Elizabeth, mm -hmm. bred, raised, married, divorced in the same city. <laughs> And uh, she is working at the university, studied in PE, and is loves working with people. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And growing up in Kebeha, <coughs> excuse me, Port Elizabeth, uh, what would you say shaped who you are? Right. Um, I was raised by my grandmother. Mm -hmm. uh, had a working mother uh, who apparently left me after 10 days Wow! and needed to go back because she was a single mom. So mm. the politics of the time, mm. she couldn't have maternity leave. Wow. wow. So basically raised by an, a retired teacher, mm -hmm. raised around books, mm. many books, many pa papers, many pens, many pencils. Uh, raised in a very active house where I had my sister and my cousins mm -hmm. who stayed with us mm -hmm. and who would come visit over weekends. So I grew up in an active, busy mm -hmm. household. I uh, grew up in the time when politics were real. Yes. So yes. 1976, I started grade one. Mm -hmm. Standard. Sub A. Sub A. Sub and A. then 1980, I was mm. going to standard three mm -hmm. and then the uprisings. And then yes. 1984, when mm. I was going into standard six, mm. again uprising. Yes. So it meant that I would lose three years of my schooling life. Mm. But wow. right in the middle of that, I found modeling and beauty competitions. And mm. so I wiled away my time yes. doing those things. Miss Port Elizabeth. A woman, you know, <laughs> a few crown titles yes. under the belt. And mm. that kept me busy because it took me away from what was at the time people getting pregnant. Mm -hmm. I, I had to be careful about mm. not getting pregnant, not mm. that gay. Mm. Anyway, so. Mm. It, I, I got to be involved in other social things. Mm -hmm. I We had a busy New Brighton. So mm. if there wasn't modeling, there was music. If, you know, people yeah. got into choral music. People got into men dance and other things. Mm. Mm. So we were kept busy. Mm. I obviously loved reading. I, I frequented the library. I took out books. I sat in my yard, little yard, mm. and I read. Hmm. So that that, I think, kept me sane mm. kept me going mm. and formulated my later career yeah you know as a as wow. a teacher i'm interested in hearing you talking about new brighton you know a busy township and i'm from Hrafrenet. Mm. i also lost three years you of know schooling. of schooling during that time yeah. and we did not have you know all of these opportunities yes. um what would you say was you know a different kind of value system of the community at the time you were everyone's child mm. you had people dedicated to you mm. for no reason i don't know how oma majola and others mm. just took their time and ran clubs every day wow we were at the wow. club we we also had Aban Dabatha Nota Tutuze who mm -hmm. ran Youth for Christ. Mm -hmm. So fortunately, mm. I got captured. Yes. And we went to club. We were carrying our books and Bibles. We would go to camps all over the country. And mm. that was the vibe. Wow. That was the vibe in mm. New Brighton. We had people who were invested in us. Mm. And, and it was a village. Mm. So if you spot somebody's mom and you were doing something wrong, you knew to run. Yes. Ha. Yeah. And and it wasn't a thing, Yoba. 
you know they're going to tell your mom, mm. they're going to tell your grandmother, mm. and you're going to be in trouble. Mm. So you avoided situations where we all here yeah. and it's going to happen and mm. you're bound to be caught yes. because everyone knows the other mm. and and that was the social life in new brighton wow. it's it's gone mm. and i suppose nati we to blame because we haven't really reinvested into yes. those big yeah. projects of clubs and other wow. things wow we're going to move a little bit uh forward now so you say you are you have this title you are a dean mm. you know of learning and teaching but you're also a registered counseling Psych psychologist. How did you come from that vibrant, you know, um, environment, deciding that you want to become a psychologist? Sure, it's more like psychology decided for me. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> when I completed my metric in 1990, I'll state my age uh, for the benefits okay. of those yes. who say you umdal. <laughs> um, I didn't know anything about psychology. Mm. And in 1991, when I went to Western Cape University, mm. we didn't have counseling psychologists or career counseling. Mm. So mm. it was a matter of meeting PE people mm. and they said, I is sauce, right? Is psych, right? Tata was trying to scores on the past. So I just took what they suggested for me, landed my first lecture in psychology, and it caught me. Wow! It made such sense that I couldn't, I couldn't. It it actually became my best subject throughout my undergrad. Wow! Um, so. It found me, I didn't find it. Mm. I, I can never claim brilliance around. I I searched and I went mm. to uh, my mm. my metric we went to career counseling and my teacher said, You're supposed to be a teacher. Okay. You you I did not like that. <laughs> you didn't want to be a teacher. No, Galoku, <laughs> a teacher in, in, in my township was mm. a person who got a school leaver yes, and went to teacher time. college. Yes. So Lomtu is not ambitious about yes. my future. Uh, uh, uh. And I couldn't <laughs> accept it. And only later when I was lecturing did mm. I go. Okay, I'm a teacher. You are a teacher. <laughs> You're a, a teacher. teacher. But I also had the same, you know, because I think we were brought up during the same time because I always wanted to be a teacher. Uh. But I didn't want to be a teacher that At went college. to college. I wanted to go eh, to eh, a university. Eh, eh, and my, okay, ma my mom did not understand that. Exactly. She exactly. Was like, What's yeah, the college like, ah, and you're going to be paid. You, yes, will, you will be paid you be as paid. a college teacher. I, said, I want a degree. I don't want a diploma. Okay. So let's talk about our topic today. Yes. Is about mental illness. Mm -hmm. And um, we hear the words being thrown around mental, mental illness. Mm -hmm. And we see a lot of people really saying, I'm depressed. I'm an anxious, I have panic attack mm -hmm. and all of those. Mm -hmm. What is mental illness? Mental illness defined by World Health Organization mm -hmm. is a condition. It, it's a, it's a, a, a diagnosed. Mm -hmm. So Umdu can't just say I'm depressed. Okay. It mm. needs to be clinically diagnosed mm. for it mm. to be a condition. Mm. And how do we know? It's because umdu is malfunctioning in a particular area or areas. Okay. So we notice a shift mm. in their regular functioning. Mm. And they can't be productive mm -hmm. in their day-to-day -day activities. There is a shift in their cognitive mm -hmm. ability. Mm. There is a shift in their emotional regulation. Mm -hmm. There is a shift in how they are behaving. Okay. Wow. Then Gengoku okay. City. Mm. All right. We're seeing a pattern. Mm. So it's not, it's hardly, let me not say not, it's hardly an isolated incident. Okay. We, we, we notice a pattern mm. and a, a combination of things. Mm. Then we would say, okay, how long has it been going? Mm. What have you noticed? Mm. And depending on what we get reported, Gengoku, we would then look at the clinical picture. Okay. And psychologically, Gengu who say, okay, this is what the person is suffering from. Because mm. there is a lot of stigma around mental yes. illness, mm, mm. there is a shift to calling it mental health conditions. Oh, okay. 
it's less mm. it's less mm. hard yeah. it's more acceptable mm. that mm. physiologically we have conditions yes. diabetes mm. high blood pressure cancer yes. and others and we we able to somewhat accept them mm. because they are known mm. but mental health conditions are, are not known you you don't see your brain mm. and and because most of this is happening in the head that's yes. hidden we don't know what's going mm. on. So you need clinical observation, Gengu, mm. to mm. be able to say, I, they have stress. Because, mm. you know, we loosely use these terms. Yes, we do. Um, and we quick to self-diagnose mm. and self-medicate. Yes. Um, but it's, it's, it should be done by a professional. Mm. Because mm. in mental health, you know, would be your ability to know that I'm optimizing my potential. I'm mm. able to do things. I'm functioning. I'm productive. I'm a productive citizen. Mm. Then can go fairly you mentally healthy. Okay. Mm. Well, thanks for that explanation <laughs> because you know you in our environment most of the time you see someone who is not behaving the you know well and sometimes it's too hey, hey. you know so we diagnose that person yes. but. And then when are you saying that you need to be diagnosed? We have so many people who are not diagnosed. Mm. What would you suggest, for example, there's a family that's watching and they know that, you know, there might, there's something, I'm, I'm, I'm anyway. seeing a trend here. Anyway. Mm. When you notice that trend, you need mm. to have a conversation. Mm. And, and unfortunately, Gena, there are conditions where you can't really have a, 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 a sensible mm. conversation with yes, the person. Yeah. To tell us your cognitions change. Yes, yes. So there may not be capacity in mm -hmm. the person to make logical decisions. Mm -hmm. But there are ways of getting that person to help. Okay. We, we can't leave our people mm. uh, roaming the streets and mm. walking about and, and, and almost exposed to risk and danger. Yes. Because if I'm walking mm. on the freeway and I, sure. I'm, I'm not properly mm. orientated, of I could get killed by a car. Mm. Mm. Um, and the guilt that the person is going to live with and the family is going to live with. So when you notice the shift, have a conversation. Mm. Don't leave it too late mm. because... There may be an, an unplanned or unforeseen mm. episode mm. where a person has a, a shift. Mm. In and in those situations, again, our police service helps. Mm. In those situations, they can step in um, and the person then is admitted involuntarily. Mm. And they become state-owned kind yes. of and mm. protected until they recover mm. so we need to intervene and there are other ways of intervening it doesn't have to be just you you can call the police and okay. they can escort the person mm. into a psychiatric environment okay that's great it's good to know and now Pumeza, when now you i said you are a dean of learning and teaching you've been in student counseling yes. i would like us to go into higher education yes. um and my question here is it that there's more prevalence of mental health conditions? Are we more aware of it? What is it? Because it, for me, and I may be a layman working in, in the street, it seems it's like everyone has got it now. Because we talk about it. We talk about it, okay. We, we talk about it. Mm, uh, mm. And, and the awareness leads to a person questioning. Mm-hmm. Good. To, oh, okay. So you learned So so in the student counseling environment, yes. we big on webinars. We call it webinars. Go it was mm. workshops in the yes, past. Yes. Yeah. Um. So we big on running those for mm. just as a tool of making people aware. Mm-hmm. And to then sit back, reflect. Mm -hmm. But again, we know we tend to catastrophize most hey, we are human we, yeah. beings. <laughs> so. We, we could start thinking about you, oh, I can hear you. Yeah, man. Mm. Uh, but again, it's that clinical element where, yes, you may be noticing certain things. It mm. may not be depression. Mm. It may be a depressed mood. Okay. Oh, there's a difference. There is a difference. Okay. You and, could be okay. adjusting from a particular situation uh -huh. and you're having an adjustment disorder with depressed mood. Mm. So, so let's not be quick to diagnose mm. depression mm. because it's difficult to treat depression. Yeah. 
and the, the the minute unai we can't just talk it out mm. we have to talk it and medicate it out okay. so we 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 run these workshops we have a lot of self-help material yes. that's on our websites where a student can go ah, i'm and this i'm shifting i'm seeing mm. something different mm. or i'm adjusting Mm. So from moving from a first year environment where we babysit and yes, we hold hands yes. to a second year level where the academic agenda is almost changed, mm. altogether mm. changed. And the pressure of that mm. can take over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. So mm. where a person is distressed or stressed, they need to then look out mm -hmm. on what's shifting. Okay. The more pressure we have, you start a new mm. job, I just started the team yes. job. New <laughs> pressures. <laughs> new and pressures. I need to then look out mm. at how am I coping? Because I may not have been exposed to the same pressures in my previous yes. job. Mm. Mm. And how then do I adjust my work patterns? How mm. then do I adjust my time management? How then do I adjust bringing along support and resources? Mm. So, so it's that constant evaluation of self. Mm. The more strenuous situations you're in, the more it's challenging on your well-being. Mm. Therefore, you need to guard. Mm. How is it shifting? Is mm. it shifting towards the positive or is it shifting towards the negative? Mm. Now you're talking about the, about the person who's got the condition. And these people live in families. Mm -hmm. And in families, and I see these jokes in, in, in social media as well, that in this house, there's no one who's going to sit I call in. depression. I call depression. Uh, you, you know? know? Depression. 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 <laughs> Not Glenn Ruyam. So how would you suggest, now you've you know, given this individual tools you know, yes. to work with, mm -hmm. but there's a family structure. Kone, kone. Dichotomy? Okay. For lack of a better word. Where we talk a lot of confidentiality, mm. privacy. Mm. It's between the therapist and the client. Yes. Mm. But there are conditions where you need the intervention of others. Mm. In depression, for example. One of the symptoms that depression would be forgetfulness. Okay. So best treatment is a combination treatment. Mm. Now, you're expecting this person to take their medicine, mm -hmm. yet they're forgetful. Yes. Mm. Also, the very medication could serve as a risk tool towards suicide. Mm. So you wow. need to then bring others in as support. And you're bound to violate the confidentiality. Yes. Of, that's, which is the primary contract between you and the client. Mm. So... As you work with that client, it, and, and therapy cannot happen without a relationship mm. with the client. Okay. So as you work with the client, they need to get an understanding. You're good. You can't do this on your own. Yeah. We need mm. a, part, a health partner yeah. that mm. can navigate the journey with you. Mm. And mm. that person can then remind you to take your tablet so we can get an app mm. if you're not comfortable with getting a person to talk to you. Or we can set an alarm on your mm. phone that will remind you to take your meds, that mm -hmm. will remind you to wake up, that will, you know? Yeah. So, because sleeping is, a, is, is one of the symptoms of depression, either mm. undersleeping or oversleeping. Mm. And that alarm needs to then be set three, you know, every other mm. 15 minutes to actually sure. get you up. Mm. Because you could stay in bed yes. and not go to class or go mm. to work or whatever. Mm. So we find ways, Geng Ok, of bringing the family in, mm -hmm. educating the families yes. mm. on the, 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 the importance of understanding the condition. It's not just umudi. Yes. It, mm. It's not just moods. Mm. Because think about it, you have teenage girls, mm. they are going through puberty, mm -hmm. their hormones are changing. Yes. It's not depression, it's moodiness. Yeah. But if there are conditions in the household that are leading to depression, it could be a combination. Mm -hmm. The physiological pressures putting on the hormones and mm. the depression that is also a, you know, a hormonal imbalance kind of, mm. or mm. a neurological issue. So yeah. it, it's real. It's mm. not because, oh, oh, 
they want attention or yes. they're being moody or they're being silly or they're being lazy. Mm. There is something in the brain that mm. is happening, mm. that is shifting, and therefore they need to be treated. Yeah. Pumisa, I want to go, at, at times I, <clears throat> you know me, I'm big on Facebook. Others might say, no, you're not even big on Facebook. But I love Facebook. Mm. And I see someone's status and there's nothing I can do about it. Yeah. And someone says, I feel like I'm drowning, mm. you know. And if you are close to that person, at least there must be something even if you inbox or you, hey, you well, phone that person. Hey, well. But what would you then advise, you know, this person, you know, to do? And also the, the ones who are putting up that status of saying I'm drowning, I feel like I don't want to wake I, up any I longer. I put out a WhatsApp status the other day. Mm. Yes, see, I'm tired. Uh -uh, I need to... I had more than 10 messages coming in. Yes. I had to put it off. Mm. I, I just deleted it because mm. that's not what I really intended. Uh -huh. But I have a social structure that mm. is very caring. And I'm, because I'm not typically the person who would put out my tiredness and my whatever, mm. then everyone was like, look out for burnout. Look, yes. they take a leave. <laughs> <laughs> and I, at a point I had to put it, delete, because mm. I was worrying a few people. Mm. The minute a person says something that gives you a sense of, a uh, uh, man, mm. in box, then... Mm. The, They've already put it out there. Yes. So it's no longer confidential. And it's not like mm. or you, you want their news. Yeah. They have put it out there. And therefore, a hey, how are you? I saw mm. your status. Mm. Are you okay? Are you okay? Do you yes. need to talk? Mm. And and sometimes it's just that ear. Mm. That ear. Because we are isolated and, and think of COVID and, yeah. and how it treated us. You are isolated. You don't have the same vibe. Mm. We're now tired. It's a Friday. Let's go to a exactly. restaurant and go make mm. noise. Mm. There is, there was nothing. Mm. So, so a person could be reaching out just for an ear, and mm. you don't want to experience the guilt, Gengoku, mm. of not doing something yes. and something happens Happened. to oh. that person. Yeah. yeah. So, so just saying, hey, I'm here. Do you mm. wanna have coffee? Do you mm. wanna talk? here's a number of someone you can maybe approach and it's non-threatening. It's not a psychologist. It mm. could be a, a service like Sadak. Mm. You give mm. them a call. It's a free call and just lay it out there. Mm. You know, mm. I, I would go to therapy just to lay it onto somebody else's lap yeah. and walk away lighter. <laughs> <laughs> so, and you pay for that. And you pay for yeah. that and your medical aid is already paid for in yes. any case. Mm. Or there are services like our Euclid our mm. university clinic that mm. offers at a minuscule amount mm. an hour session with a trained person who can do the same thing for you. Exactly. I was going to come to that because you're talking about COVID. And for me, this online learning yeah. that has really put, you know, a lot of students in isolation, like you were saying, and also the conditions um, of home. Yeah you know, and not having connectivity, yeah. not having data, yeah. not having the right device. And you with your um, student counseling background, what would you say are the big lessons for higher education? We saw an, a very interesting thing. The minute COVID happened and we sent students home, mm. all of a sudden, family relationships became number one reason for referral. Wow. Really? Since 2020. Wow. It was there. It was mm. featuring under the top 10 mm. reasons for referral. Mm. But for 2020 March, it became number one wow. to date. So mm. university for you and me was mm. an escape from doing house chores. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you, yes. You, you went to varsity mm. and you were in your room. It didn't matter how it looked and, mm. and all of mm. that. Mm. But our students come from families, reality is we're facing poverty. Mm. Reality is we're facing disrupted families. Mm -hmm. Reality is we have childhood at home. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you listen to students feeling guilty about having a meal 
Yes. On campus. Yes. While their siblings at home do not have mm. food. Mm. You mm. see students taking their NSFAS money and mm. sending their money home yes. and finding other ways of mm. coping here mm. and or taking a food parcel. You, yes. So so mm. those realities mm. are surfacing. The the social isolation that came with COVID. Mm. Researchers are comparing it to solitary confinement. Wow. Mm. Same psychological response. Mm. So you can't be within your head for too long mm. and not start seeing darkness. Yeah. So we, we've seen a higher need mm. for counseling. Mm. Uh, we've seen the family structure being the problem. Mm. We've seen, you, you can't really, uh, strange, I'm, I'm, I'm saying can't, but this person has already passed a metric mm. in the same conditions. Yes. Hmm. Now we send them home to the very conditions. Wow. They had already escaped for two months. Mm. Escaped, maybe a yeah. terrible word. Mm. But they left. Yes. They and saw they, they, they saw, saw different. different. Yes. Now they are being pushed yes. back into that same yeah. environment. Mm. No mm. electricity. Yeah. I've got a laptop. I bought the laptop. Mm. I got it. The mm. university gave me a, a you know yeah. a scheme. Mm. But I can't use it because I can't plug it. Yeah. They've sent me 30 gigs of data. Mm. I've got them. I've got a laptop, but I don't have electricity. Yeah. So, so those realities are, what, are, are why we call the difficulties our students go through psychosocial issues, mm. not just psychological issues, mm. because the social issues yes. lead. Yes. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a partnership, yeah. but either one can lead to the other. Mm. So the social pressures can lead to psychological pressures or the psychological pressures can lead to social problems within the family where mm. all of a sudden people don't understand what is going through this person. Their cognitions are not mm. well. They can't, we, we very careful most when we talk to people, mm. we count our words. Yes. Uh, only the crazy ones like me, crazy, uh -huh. uh, will say what they're thinking. Mm. Mm. So, so all of a sudden this condition is removing the, the inhibitions. Mm. Mm -hmm. And the person is now saying yes. secrets yeah. within the family. And that mm. leads to a broken down social relationship. Wow. So it's, it's, a, it's, mm. a, it's a dance, Muki, mm. a very intricate dance mm. between the brain, the, the, some of the things that our students expose themselves mm. to and us as adults expose ourselves to. They actually trigger mm. some of these illnesses. Wow. So alcohol, for example, we don't necessarily classify it as a drug, yeah. but it kills more than any other. Wow. And it takes away, the first thing it does, it takes away inhibitions. Yes, it does. So mm. all of a sudden yeah. you have a, a chatty pumeza yeah, who is loud. sociable mm -hmm. and they then get themselves involved mm. in certain things that mm. they wouldn't have typically gotten themselves involved mm. in. So, so all of those things can go and alcohol problems and, and substance abuse problems yes. are a psychological condition mm -hmm. by the way yeah. so so depending kena oba were you born of a couple that had alcoholism mm. because genetically you predisposed mm. to alcoholism mm. and mm. if you start drinking like the rest of everyone else mm. adversity it might stay with you longer than it would stay with others wow. who can walk away from mm. it. So, so we, we also then need to know ourselves deeper. Yeah. Because you may be doing what everyone is doing. Yes. We call it mm. peer pressure, we call it excitement, or mm. we call it experience. Yes. And experimenting. And experimenting mm. and jollying and yes. having fun. Mm. But you might be that one who will end up with a substance problem yeah. and everyone else can walk away and go back to class mm. but when are you bubbleized and you can't and you, perform and you need to get another and one and you need to then get another one mm. to get you going and mm. then you need another one to get you mm. going so mm. it, it's quite a dynamic and, mm. and quite an individualized dynamic mm. because galoko it goes with the biology of a person the yes. physiology of a person and mm. the, the social and psychological element wow. now as we conclude Dr. 
Oh, yes, I'm going back there. Yes. Um, what would be your parting words? You know, I've asked you questions based on the conversation, but is there something that you feel that I must say this at this point? It's important to know yourself. Mm -hmm. Because if you know how you normally function, mm. and you know how you normally feel, mm. and you know how you normally think, Mm -hmm. when something changes, you are able to say, whoa, mm. Mm. Let, let me process this. Yeah. Mm. And, and it's very important to process it cognitively mm -hmm. because you need to have a good understanding of what you are going through. It may not have a name as yet. Mm. The name may be given by your psychologist or yes. your psychiatrist or your, or, or your GP for that mm. matter. But the minute you stop and you say, hey, hey man, something is shifting, mm. I'm not myself. Yeah. You then are able to consult and you then are able to make meaning mm. of what you have been thinking about yes. and trying to understand. Mm -hmm. And then you would be able to manage it. it it's, mm. and, and, and it, any condition, any, mm. any condition that's diagnosed, mm. if you feel you can manage it, mm. If your doctor or psychologist or psychiatrist make you hope mm. that you can manage this, mm. you halfway con oh, wow. conquered. Mm. You know, so let's make it fashionable to have a psychologist for each family. Yeah. As we have a GP and a dentist and a this and a that, mm. let's make it fashionable to have a psychologist in the mix. Mm. So that whoever needs to consult about any question that mm. they cannot make sense of, they can just go and ask. Mm. Not because you're psychologically ill, yes, but because you're confronting a decision sometimes mm. that you cannot process on your own. Yeah. And you need a person to just process it with you. Mm. So let's make mental health or even mental illness and one of the illnesses that are in the book mm. that you can have yeah. because you may have been at risk to have it. Mm. Wow. And know yourself. Know yourself. Make psychologists fashionable. fashionable. It must part be cool. Of the family. It must be cool. cool to have a psychologist. Wow. I'm not trying to promote. Yes, no. But let's make it cool to mm. have a psychologist. Like mm. we're making it cool to have wine. Let's make it cool to have a psychologist. <laughs> Love that. Thank you so much, Thank you, Meza, Moki. for your time. Thank Ladies you. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. We had a wonderful discussion. Until next time, bye-bye.